Finals SAQ32, TORP syndrome. The case. A 75-year-old man is having a TURP under spinal anesthesia. A. Which clinical features would make you suspect the patient has TURP syndrome? This includes respiratory symptoms such as tachypnea, hypoxia, respiratory distress and pulmonary edema, cardiovascular, hypertension with reflex bradycardia, then acute congestive cardiac failure, hypotension and CVS collapse. ECG may show broadening of QRS complexes, T-wave inversion due to hyponatremia. Neurological symptoms and signs include burning sensation in the face and hands, headache, visual disturbances, confusion, restlessness, convulsions and coma. Absence of signs of high spinal block, as this is a differential diagnosis, although both may happen at the same time. GI signs include nausea and vomiting, Blood results show hyponatremia, hypoosmolarity, low hematocrit, and hemoglobin. B. List the intraoperative factors that may increase the risk of developing TURP syndrome. This includes high pressure of irrigation fluid, back height more than 70 cm above the patient, increased quantity of irrigation fluid used, reduced venous pressure, such as in the hypotensive or hypovolemic patient, prolonged surgery lasting more than one hour, Increased blood loss, which increases the number of open veins, which increases the rate of absorption of the irrigation fluid. Capsular or bladder perforation, which allows fluid into the peritoneum, from which it is rapidly absorbed. And large prostate. C. How would you manage suspected TURP syndrome? This is an emergency situation. Call for help. Manage and treat the patient simultaneously adopting an ABC approach. Alert the theatre team and notify the surgeon. Stop all bleeding points. Stop surgery ASAP. Stop further irrigation fluid. Airway and breathing. Provide 100% oxygen. Auscultate the chest and check for oxygen saturations. Intubate and provide IPPV if necessary. Consider IV furosemide for pulmonary edema. However, this may exacerbate hyponatremia. Alternative is mannitol. Renal replacement therapy if required. Circulation. Atropine, inotropes, and vasopressors may be required. Stop IV fluids. Take blood for sodium, osmolality, and hemoglobin. Blood transfusion may be required. Set outline and check for blood gases. Set central venous line. Neurology. Manage seizures with lorazepam or magnesium. If serum sodium remains more than 120 millimoles per liter, fluid restriction should suffice. If serum sodium is less than 120 millimoles per litre, or severe symptoms of hyponatremia is present, give 3% sodium chloride to raise sodium by 1 millimole per litre per hour until symptoms improve. Do not raise serum sodium too fast to avoid central pontine myelinosis. Infusion rate of 3% normal saline mils per hour equals sodium deficit divided by 513 times 1000 mils divided by 24 hours where sodium deficit equals 8 times total body water for a goal of 8 millimol per litre in 24 hours, where TBW equals 0 0.60 times weight in kg, times 0 0.85 if female, times 0 0.85 if elderly. Value should always be less than 60 mils per hour. Use online calculator to confirm the rate. Recheck serum sodium very frequently as adjustments will be needed. Alternative is to Infuse 1.2 to 2.4 mils per kg per hour of 3% sodium chloride until symptomatic improvement. Maximum rate of correction should not exceed 1.5 to 2 millimoles per litre per hour or 12 millimoles per litre in 24 hours serum sodium to avoid central pontine myelinosis. Beware of compounding effects on serum sodium by other treatments such as diuretics and colloids. Level 2 or 3 emission for supportive treatment with ongoing monitoring of osmolality, hemoglobin, and sodium may be required. Additional information. Examiner report. Weaker candidates did not mention CNS features and many did not read the question thoroughly and ignored the information that the patient had received neuraxial anesthesia. Few candidates mentioned repeated measurements of sodium and osmolality. TURP syndrome. This is a combination of fluid overload and hyponatremia. 
which occurs when large volumes of irrigation fluid are absorbed by open venous sinuses. It occurs between 15 minutes and 24 hours after the start of surgery. Signs of pulmonary edema, cerebral edema, and hyponatremia are the usual presenting features. Other clinical features have been mentioned previously. Hyponatremia and hypoosmolality causes neurological complications. Glycine 1.5% is hypotonic at 220 milliosmo per kg. Free water absorption into the brain parenchyma causes raised intracranial pressure, water intoxication and cerebral edema. Glycine, an inhibitory neurotransmitter, may cause toxicity which leads to nausea, headache, transient blindness and myocardial depression. Glycine potentiates NMDA receptor activity causing encephalopathy and seizures. Magnesium stabilizes NMDA receptors, so it's useful in managing seizures. Ammonia is a metabolite of glycine and may also contribute to CNS symptoms. Why can normal saline be used nowadays instead of glycine as irrigation fluid? This is due to the advent of bipolar probes for TURP. Classic TURP uses monopolar cautery. Unipolar probes require an irrigation fluid that does not conduct electricity to avoid thermal burns therefore the use of glycine, which is non-conductive. However, bipolar probes allow the use of conductive fluids such as normal saline. Hyponatremia is far less likely. However, absorption of large volumes causing overload may still occur. A meta-analysis comparing monopolar versus bipolar TURP found that the bipolar technique eliminated the TURP syndrome and had a lower overall complication rate. How to prevent TURP syndrome? Choosing regional anesthesia allows for early detection, particularly CNS symptoms. Avoid monopolar cautery and non-isotonic irrigation. Use normal saline irrigation. Minimize fluid absorption by lowering infusion pressures. Bladder pressure should be less than 15 mmHg. Height of irrigation fluid should be less than 70 cm. Monitor the quantity of irrigation fluid absorbed. Consider terminating the procedure if there is more than 2 liters fluid deficit. Limit TURP time to 60 to 90 minutes. Absorption rate is typically 10 to 30 ml per minute. Limit the prostate mass excise. How to estimate estimated blood loss during TURP? In an article comparing three methods in estimating blood loss during TURP by Xiao Juan Yuan et al. in 2021, concluded that the following formula is the most accurate. 2 mil blood was collected from each patient before TURP and was diluted in 3 liters of saline, and the amount of red blood cells, cell per mil, was measured for standardization. Within 2 hours after surgery, the amount of red blood cell was calculated in the saline flush. The amount of RBCs was calculated by using routine urine analysis. The formula is calculated blood loss in mils equals RBC after, divided by RBC before, times saline after, divided by 3000 times 2, where RBC before is the pre-op red blood cell in saline in cells per microliter, and RBC after is post-op RBCs in saline cells per microliter, and saline after is total volume of flush saline after surgery. What are the sensory supply to the urethra, prostate, bladder neck and bladder mucosa. Sensory supply to the urethra, prostate, bladder neck and bladder mucosa is from S2 to S4. Pain from bladder distension, however, is carried by T10 to L2. How to treat penile erection during cystoscopy? Penile erection can make cystoscopy difficult and surgery hazardous. It usually occurs due to surgical stimulation when depth of anesthesia is inadequate and can usually be managed by deepening anesthesia. If the erection still persists, small doses of ketamine can be useful. What is obturator spasm? Obturator spasm occurs when the obturator nerve, which runs adjacent to the lateral walls of the bladder, is directly stimulated by the diatomy current. It causes adduction of the leg and can seriously impair surgical access and increase the risk of bladder perforation. It can usually be controlled by reducing the diatomy current or intermittent use of neuromuscular blockade. What are some important post-op complications of rigid cystoscopy? 
This includes bladder perforation, bacteremia and septic shock, bladder spasm and TURP syndrome. What are the signs of bladder perforation? This includes suprapubic pain, generalized abdominal pain and peritonism, shoulder tip pain, and irrigation fluid going in exceeds that going out.